so it could go around a hammock um, to kind of help trap the air in. Anybody who's been hammock camping, you know how important that is. Um, but you know, all of all but one of those, or I guess maybe two, but um, all but one is 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 talking about using this liner independently. So um, it, that response really bothered me. This is part of their bushcraft line, right? Yes. Like so. Um, in bushcraft, one of the one of the number one key elements to any kind of survival or bushcraft situation is fire. Yep. Like any, like uh, making fire is is fundamental, and we have this this issue now where we have fire and um, and we have a hole in this now. Uh, price tag, okay, the price tag on the swagman roll is about one hundred and twenty dollars. Um. For $120 and to be part of their bushcraft line, I expected a whole lot more, okay? Yep. It kept me warm, it kept me comfortable, but I'll be honest with you folks, I mean, what do you think, Evan, feel this, do you think that this would really hold up to like running through like thorn bushes? Oh no, and... no though, this is, this is definitely the, and I come from thorn bush country, I mean, it's let me thin. It's thin. Uh, basically, what we would do uh, back in my, you know, back when we were, you know, roughing it, was I would carry like three or four ponchos, and I would roll those things up to nothing. And we're talking military issue ponchos. Which that that's what this, this is. is. That that's what this is. This right here is a GI military issue, uh, army issue poncho. And now. What we would do is we would throw, we would clean off the ground. Yeah. Get rid of all the rocks, the litter, the debris, anything could catch fire. And I would put my oldest poncho on the ground. Right. Then I would take a tarp. Yep. Just an OD green canvas tarp. Slap that down. Yeah. Then I'd put up my lean to. Uh,. Guys, and then on the lean-to, I take another couple of ponchos and drape over the canvas lean-to. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason he would do that, and this would be my spike hunt camp. Right. Now, the reason that I do this is because I, if I hear a noise, I can grab my rifle yeah. and defend the camp. Or I could, uh, if I needed to, I could kick up the fire poke the fire, but the fire doesn't have to be huge. No, but it protects you from but rain. But these are, the but elements. this is actually fire resistant. Too. Right, exactly. I mean, burning a hole in your whoopee is not, is a, you know, I've had in this. survival camp, number one thing you do, before you do anything, you get your fire started. Right, exactly, and I've had this at probably 50 to 100 at least different camping trips and um, I've sat around the fire with it. I've never had a single hole burned into it. And this $120 uh, Swagman roll, it, it had a hole burned into it. Okay, this is like a, this is a GI poncho. Uh, one of the again, it's a great a great tool to have. I have a bunch of them. Now we're going to talk about this in a minute. Uh, the Swagman roll actually uh, they have a uh, another uh, poncho that they actually make. Helicon Tech actually makes, but it's also um, it's like another hundred and twenty dollars. You're talking like two hundred and twenty, two hundred fifty dollars for a full that set. Quick. That adds up quick, guys. Poncho and poncho liner. Now, he, okay. So I'm gonna start shedding layers here real quick. But um, this this is designed to go with that GI poncho. Okay, it is designed. Um, these uh, there is these uh, buckles that can buckle in the front. And basically make it make you have kind of some sleeves here in the front. There's a pocket right here. And look, folks, I'm gonna be honest with you. I I do, even though I'm talking a lot of stuff about it right now. I love it. I love this thing, and I'm gonna wear it a lot. Um, that's why I patched it. The, but the issue was that I well, my wife spent $120 on this thing, and I got a hole. So next time I go camping, I'm gonna have to be worried about an ash falling from the fire and burning another hole. So I bought a bunch of patches just in case. Um, hopefully I don't have to use them, but this is not something that I feel 100% confident is gonna hold up over the long term. Especially with bushcraft, guys. Yeah. Like I said, um, 
bushcraft is you're going to beat stuff up. Right. I actually had a guy come to me one time, and he said, I'm a bushcrafter. What do you recommend? I said, I'd get the toughest lightweightest the most lightest knife that you could get and i said mora yeah. knife one of the best. carbon carbon steel so it's not the cheapest one but it's a you know you got to keep it oiled but putting the edge on that is quick oh yeah yeah and i said you this way you yeah. <laughs> you have to get a um a good camp axe yeah yeah. I mean, you don't have to have a Paul Bunyan big heavy duty axe, but you do need um an axe that can act like a hammer as well. Yeah, yes, yeah, a small a smaller and, axe, right. And Can't guys, have. this what I like about this is uh I like using binos a yeah. lot. I can put my Nikon binos yeah. right here. Keep them across my neck. Got a little pouch. Now, so so let's bring to this. So, after my experience with Helicon Techs, again, I I still like it. I still would recommend it. I would. Okay. I I don't want to just completely slam it. I do like it. I would recommend it. Okay. Um, would I buy another one? Mm, probably not. Okay. I'm good with the one that I have. Um, so this. So I started doing some research. Okay. And I I went on Amazon and I found. Um, this company, this is called uh, the Huncho, H-U-N-C-H-O, uh, yeah. okay? Yeah. Now this poncho right here, again, is modeled after the GI poncho. It's actually a little bit bigger. The cool thing about it is, is it's got this drawstring right here that goes all the way through and it zips up here in the front, so that way it can get nice and tight and give you a really good seal around your face. That's a, that's a big that's a big deal. Yeah, because a lot of times when you're in these GI ponchos, you have water that's coming down your neck. Um, so this is actually uh, and hypothermia is a thing at 50 degrees. Oh yeah, and now this this actually will go over the brim of a hat. Okay, this yeah. hood, which is really nice. Um, and then, like Evan said, you have the pocket there in the front, which is a nice feature. And then up front here, you have these vent holes. So Evan was talking about how hot he was, m mainly because of that thing. Um, but you have these vent holes here. So if you need to wear a poncho in the summer, you can open this bad boy up, and uh, and you have you can get some air. Now, in the back, they have another zipper. And let's see if Evan can identify what this zipper would be for Evan. What, what would you? What do you think that this zipper in the back? Did it go use the bathroom? No, no, it's not low enough. I mean, yeah. your your butt crack might be that high. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that could be. Uh, let's see. If you're hiking, yeah, what are you wearing? The, oh, your sidearm on your back. It's your on, butt pack. Your back, right? Yeah. This is your back. Okay, so this is going to be, I think. This is going to be for somebody reaching in and grabbing something out of your pack for you, out of your backpack. Um, I guess you could also use it for ventilation, uh, but then I don't know how you would really unzip it and zip it if it was just I ventilation. No, nah, just that's just get something out of the, the. Yeah, and that would be like a uh, your eye pack. Yeah, on that might be on your butt pack. And this and this material now. Um, Good sturdy rip stop nylon. You probably can't see it on camera, but it's got these little um, grids sewn in. It into sure it. is rip stop. Yep. Um, look, holding them, holding them yeah. together is just a little bit thicker than the GI version. Yeah. But weight wise, it's not. It's, it's the same it's weight. Pretty close. Now on this poncho. It's got these these button snaps right here, okay? What they do is they actually snap to the sides of the poncho liner. So, in other words, if you wanted to, you can actually make a shelter out of this by yourself. And you can make you could you could but you could also just make it one one piece. One piece yeah. So, if you wanted to use this as a sleeping bag or something like that or just even just have it as one piece which stops kind of the movement. Um, you snap those together. Now, again, same concept as the other, uh, let me think here how this works. Um, 
Yeah, so same concept as the other one. You fold it hot dog style. And this actually got its own pack. Yeah, yep. And then you can button these. You can button these little buttons right here all the way along the bottom or along the side. And then you can climb into this thing as a sleeping bag or a sleeping bag liner. Really, really freaking cool. Okay. Now look, um, this has got the strings on it, just like the uh, the Wooby does, just like the GI Poncho liner does. That's, that goes around the tree. Yeah, and you could use it. You could use it for for turning that into a, an overhead tarp. Um, and and the, what the actual original Wooby was designed is to to tie through the eyelets that are inside of the GI uh, Poncho, and these are are actually designed to match up with that GI Poncho. So if you don't want to buy the the Huncho Poncho, you can buy the Huncho. Poncho, the the Huncho Wooby, and um, and it will work with your GI Poncho. You could same same thing, just like Evan said. You could spray this down with silicone, and and it becomes waterproof. Um, and, and the thing about it is, a sticker than your other right yeah uh, your helon text yep liner no, yep definitely thicker and, and rip stop i mean again look at the fabric you can see the little grids in there you had to hold it up to the light but yeah you and now the other thing i want to point out is you have just like in your in your gi wobi you have these patterns that are sewn in there okay so what that means is is even if a uh, thorn or something gets past those rip stop grids it's only going to get to the closest um thread the, the uh, thread pattern that's right there right yeah that's as far as it's gonna go uh, the only thing so then if you want to use this as a sleeping bag this is the neck hole right here the head hole um, so one of the differences between this and the helicon text is that this doesn't have a hood this you just slip your head through and you use your poncho's hood which for me it's okay that doesn't that's not it a deal. It just depends on what you guys are doing, but I mean, as far as, let's say, a ground blanket. Yeah, great, great. Great, great for ground. That's what I was looking at, you yep. know, or uh, another thing is, too, when you when you use a lean-to, yep. uh, you tie this up above it. Yeah, you could, yeah, and it's going to provide insulation. You tie this above you in the lean-to, yep. have a fire uh, in front of you, and the heat's going to bounce up off of this down into the lean-to to keep you nice and warm. It, um now, you don't have you don't have to do a whole, and you don't need a big bonfire. No, not at all. Now, on if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to put some pictures up really quick of how I actually set the Huncho uh, Poncho and Poncho liner up um, as you do a, a lean video. Shot. Didn't you do a video with these? No, or no, no, yet. no. That, that was, that was another one. Yeah, but I, I am going to be doing like an outdoor actual use video to show you, to show everybody how we can set these up as a. Uh, as a shelter, but I actually set both of these up um, at the lake over here by us as a lean-to shelter. I used this as a ground cover. I used this as the lean-to, and it was a nice windy day. It was actually, I took my family to the lake, and um, th this setup gave my family a place to get out of the sun and um, and be able to enjoy the time, and, and they loved it. They loved having laying on the blanket in the grass. It was nice and comfortable. Um, and Evan will tell you, um, we're in the studio, the air conditioning's on, and it, I mean, w both of us are sweating our butts it's off. All, I mean, those things were hot. Yeah, yeah. And guys, like I said, I'm hot natured as it is. And that was uncomfortable. Yeah. And, and But like I said, in the field, raining, 60 degrees, 50, uh, 50, what is it, 52 degrees? Uh, hypothermic, uh, hypothermic yeah. could set in. So th it's important to have good rain gear. Yeah, it really is. It really is. And these are tools, these are our tools that I think that everybody should have. Now, now let's really quick just kind of talk about the, the price points here. So um, I honestly, I don't, I, I can't remember the exact prices, but I think, and hopefully I, I'm, hopefully I am, uh, I am, um, under promising over delivering here because or no yeah yeah that's it yeah, yeah that's, that's it. it um because uh, i i think that the poncho liner is forty dollars and the poncho is sixty dollars or somewhere in there so but together they're they're about a hundred dollars okay Versus 130. 120, 130 for the for just for the liner with Helicon Tex. Now, like I said, 
Helicon text. One of my, it, it, it kills me. One of my favorite uh, companies for tactical gear and bushcraft gear. Um, you know, I, I, my buddy has a, a, a fleece. A big thick fleece from them that he has worn winter after winter after winter and it's, it always holds up and it keeps him warm even in the coldest temperatures I mean great great company but with this product um, I think we we kind of miss the mark a little bit if we want it to be uh, you know specifically bushcraft now when I look at the the bag that this comes in it is made of that ripstop nylon. It's got those grids sewn into it. Now, why couldn't they make the? You would think that that would they would you'd think that they would make it out of the same material. I mean, I would think. Now, on the inside of this, it's more of like a slick. Um, it's like a slick nylon. No, no, that's that's silk. That's almost like silk. It, yeah, it feels silky. Yeah. Polo, no, it's polyester. Is what that is. This inside of the pocket here, they have this little uh, this little loop that you can hang your keys from or something if you wanted to. If you were walking around or a flashlight, if you had it on like a lanyard, you could hang it on you there. You can put that inside your lean to. Yeah, and this, I mean, like I said, folks, I like this. I, I'm not. I'm not going to get rid of it. I'm not going to sell it. I'm not going to. I'm not going to give it away. I'm not going to get rid of it. And I'm going to wear it. I'm going to wear it probably pretty regularly. Um, this is also something that, given the color scheme, I've worn out just like to the store. You know, when it's when it's raining outside or or and, when it's and a little about chilly. It, is it doesn't look tactical. It doesn't. No, it, it just looks like a, this, I mean, It this. looks like a poncho, and not many people walk around wearing ponchos, but I do, and uh, and I'm okay with it. You know, to this, me, this looks like something you're going to go hunting in. Yes, which is what it is actually designed for. The guy who designed this is actually a hunter. And, and the only thing, the only thing that, that I don't like about this is the orange around the outside. Um, not a deal breaker, not a deal breaker. But it, it's it's something that would make it so it'd be kind of difficult to use in a tactical situation. Yeah, definitely. Uh, no, you out. wouldn't. I would not use this. And let's say a sniper Overwatch situation. Yeah. Now, but that's that, that's just not the philosophy of use for this particular poncho. No. Um, now the the poncho again has the same snaps on it, so you could do the same thing. You could turn this into like a bivy cover, which is which is what you call the thing that you slide over your sleeping bag to stop it from getting wet. Yo, yeah, definitely. Um, Nobody wants a wet sleeping bag. And it's also got these grommets that are um, that are in the corners. Now these grommets are doubled over. Um, the the material is doubled over here, so that way um, yeah, it's double stitch. Yeah, and it gives you strength. Okay. Now I use these as a, um, and I was a little worried because it doesn't feel that like durable. Like when no. you, like it feels really thin. Um, and I thought that when you take those buttons and you put them together, those snaps, I thought, man, like I, I'm afraid to pull on them because I didn't want the the fabric to rip around the snaps, but they don't. They're, they're built really, really well. And another thing is too, all you do is you get yourself like a little slip knot, you do a like a little hook and loop kind of thing, and you can actually tie this up uh, as a tent. Yeah. Yep. Now absolutely. one thing. Now one thing is that you zip. You got to zip up all the zippers, but you have a drawstring here. Yep. So this would actually draw this hole up to nothing. You exactly. turn it inside out, and you got yourself an emergency shelter if you need. Yeah. To. Definitely. Now on the newer models, the um, the owner and the designer of this has told me that they're making a couple small changes or improvements. And um, one of them is they're. I'm curious to see what that is. They're making an extra inch, and then they're folding it over. A, uh, I think a third time. So it's going to make this this edge of this poncho. Now my question even is: it gonna, Is it going to be heavier? Minimal, I think. Minimal. Yeah, minimal. I mean, but because it's it's all. I mean, well, it's the light. reason the reason is when you're talking ponchos, when we're talking ponchos, guys. Number one thing is when you're talking about gear ounces equal pounds yeah you don't want to be carrying an extra something around 
while you're out in the field. No. You know, like you want to, you want to keep your weight down. Yeah. Now there's good weight. Yeah. And I said that there's good weight. Yeah. And there's bad weight. You've got to adjust your gear with what you got. Exactly. Now, and we'll we'll finish up here. Um, so the what the uh, Helicon Tex, it comes in into this bag. It comes with a drawstring. Um, it's got this nylon mesh thing at the bottom to kind of keep it aired out. Um, it's a nice setup overall. Um, like I said, the bag I think is more durable than the actual poncho itself. Um, now, the the uh, the the huncho poncho fits into this little bag. So again, if we're looking at like uh, uh, the like a space thing, this is a tiny little bag. It folds up and fits into this little bag. And then the huncho whoopee, the the poncho liner, it actually rolls up into itself and kind of you kind of make a bed roll out of it. And um, And on the back here, it's got its own little pouch. And that's kind of cool. It really is. So this comes on Velcro here. Nice. And then you roll it basically into thirds. You roll it over itself. Kind of like a then, sleeping bag. Yep. And then you go from the bottom and you roll it up and you have a bed roll. And um, so size wise, you have two things as opposed to the, um, but but you have, you have completely the, the, um, the functionality of the two together, it just totally blows the Helicon Tex out of the water. So if if you're looking at a system it's like this. It's polyester. Yeah. yeah. Yep. If you're looking at a system like this, okay, you're interested. If you love the Wooby, okay, the GI uh, poncho liner, if you love it, if that's an essential part of your kit, you really need to consider picking up one of these two setups out of the two. I'm going with the huncho, okay? Um, this is what I am going to take most of the time with me. Um, I uh, agree. Uh, it, I mean, I really do it. I, I mean... It's, and it's long. So that's the other consideration with ponchos. A lot of times you have the poncho you know doesn't mean? cover your... Like, it barely goes below your knees, so then you get water pouring into your boots. These, uh, both of these options, but especially the huncho here, it goes right down to, to my lower calf. Um, which, which is going to keep, I have, I usually wear, uh, calf high boots, boots, hiking boots. So, um, that's going to keep the water off and out of my I mean, boots. we're, me and, me and Andy are both six footers. Yeah. So when you're talking, uh, poncho, poncho liners, you need to be able to go pretty much from your, like I said, the tip of your boot all the way up. Yep. And then the last thing that I'll say about this is how I said you can fold it like a, so the Helicon Tax you would zip up just like a hot dog. With this, um, for for bigger guys, you could you could double it over as a, like a hamburger, um, and it's going to give you more space width wise. And it, But again, like Evan said, so I'm six foot, this is touching the ground, and it's coming right up to about my nipple level. So, um, you know, if it wasn't too cold, or if you kind of could get into a fetal position, um, you know, a big guy could easily fit inside of this setup um, and have a setup that way. To me, I would put it, uh, I'd, I'd fold it in half long ways, yep. button it up that way, climb inside of it. I'm not too claustrophobic when it comes down no. to uh, sleeping bags and stuff. So I think, I don't, Evan, what do you think? For, if, if I had to choose between the two, I think Honcho's got the... I think Honcho's got it over the other one um, because of the weight, the pouches, the versatility. Yeah. Um, they really put a lot of thought and effort yeah, into that. Yeah, I think so too. And the other company, I hate to say it, I think it's one by name. I think so too. Yeah. I hate to say it. And I mean, don't get me wrong. It is good quality. I mean, if you look at it, the stitching is really good stitching. It's um, got the good clips. It's got YKK zippers, um, which is which is really good. I mean, YKK is the gold standard of zippers. <clears throat> it's got these drawstrings. I mean, look, don't get me wrong. I I really do. I love this, and um, I will continue to wear this. I, I will. I'm just sorry. I'm just sorry they just didn't make it more flame repellent. And and uh, you know it, what 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 really bothered me, what really kind of got me on this journey, was calling the customer service department and them kind of just saying that uh, 
hey, you know, that's just, they're not meant to, to come in touch with, come in contact with fire. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Um, there's not really anything we could do. And then I, you know, they said they'd get in touch with their research and development team. They said the research and development team said, you know, put a patch on it. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of a strange color. It's kind of like a flat, dark earth, um, which, is, which is, I like. However, it's not a color that's easy to find a patch to match the color with. Well, and the so. thing about it, and the thing about it is, that's 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 nominal. That's just what we call field field test. Right. I mean, this was unforeseen on anybody's part that a amber from a flame yeah. got got yeah. on this. But it's at the little... same time, no. uh, it goes to show you a lot of these companies. Do not field test their equipment. And coming from where I come from, fire is going to be your first thing yeah. you're going to do. Every time. Every single time. That's why when you see all these shows like uh, Naked Alone, and Afraid and Alone. These Alone, these survival shows, they're always focusing on building a bow drill and, and you know, making fire and stuff because it's, it's just, it's that critically important so this can't hold up to food, one food tiny can little wait area. right water can wait your fire can't that's because good. fire is part of shelter so you have um you have uh three weeks without food three days without water three minutes without air um and three hours without um warmth without shelter okay now shelter doesn't mean you need a house it doesn't mean you need to build this big extract but what shelter does is it gives you morale, okay? It gives you a place to work from. It's like you're, for those of us that were in the military, it's a FOB, a forward operating base, okay? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's somewhere that you, can, that you can rally up to and you can work out of. And if you don't have that, then your chances of survival go way, way down. down. And um, so, to, so fire is a part of that, as part of that shelter. So this can be used to make shelter. Those can be used to make shelter. Um, like I said, to me, if I had to pick one of the two, I'm going with the Huncho, and I recommend that. If uh, Check the video out on YouTube. If you're watching it live, check the video out on YouTube. It should be on there by tomorrow. I will have links in the description to, to both of these products, but I would say that the win goes to Huncho. You can spend $100 or less on a poncho and a poncho liner and get superior quality in my opinion. And, and I I had to concur because the Hello 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 Context Hello Context put a lot of thought in over engineering it, but they were cared more about where the stress points were than worrying about wait a minute the guy's going to be around fire and they also they also put a lot into the comfort of it it is really comfortable yeah well what i'm saying is so, they, they they went they went from that end of it right yeah yeah definitely um so it's really comfortable though it's what i will say like i said i'm not i don't want to bash it i really don't i it, it breaks my heart it's really hard for me to do it but but i agree i think that when you look at who who looked at these two products and said um, how can we apply the most usefulness the and, and went the utilitarian route the honcho hands down hands down with the honcho because you can do everything with the yep, honcho exactly and it's lightweight and like I said the, the helicon text is a little heavier yeah but it's not a deal breaker no and both and, should and, be relatively waterproof. Um, you know, again, spray some silicone spray on it, and both should be waterproof. Um, like I said, I, we, it, just, it just depends on where you're at. Yeah, yeah. and, and it, some people, some people are just brand shoppers. Some people will buy the Helicon Text because they know the name, and that's fine. Yeah, yeah, listen, guys, we're here to tell you you can't get hung up on brand names. No, no. We we've had huh, we've had good experiences with it. Yeah. We had bad experience with it. Yeah. And sometimes it might just be the equipment. Yep, exactly. You know, we got good premium equipment, but there again, you get one one thing that might not be up to their par. Yeah. And then when you go out there and you start testing this gear, like yep. we test gear, yep. uh, 
what? Things happen. Yeah, Things do. break. Yep. I mean, especially when you give them to Evan, they always break. So I never will anyway, move it. hopefully you enjoyed this segment here at Camp Deplorable General. Yep. And um, we're going to be doing this more often. Yeah, we have a handful of really cool gear that we have been like chugging away and really using and trying to like test it to the limits. Um, we have some ballistic stuff, some bulletproof stuff. We have some some guns that we're going to bring to the table here. Um, so hopefully you enjoy uh, here we, at Camp uh, Deplorable General. And also with my hog hunt we got a camera yeah that we're going to be testing also yep it's military issue it's going to go on a helmet and we're going to film me in texas for three days hunting so yeah, doing the hog hunt that should be awesome and i'll edit that down and we'll have at least one maybe a couple episodes we'll probably stretch it over just so that way you can kind we of also see have, what Evan did on that experience uh, before the summer's out uh, we need to get up to the military museum too. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, we have a couple of those. So we're going to be going out and doing some some really good um, podcasts out, out and about, out in the community. Hopefully we'll see you out there. If you see us out and about, don't hesitate to pull us aside and say, hey, aren't you a deplorable general? Um, you know, we, we enjoy well, the recognition. Yep. So uh, I'm Evan. I'm Andy. Deplorable, deplorable general, general, over and out. out.